Good morning, everyone. Um, today I've got uh, Professor Lachlan Thompson from the Flora Institute with me. Lachlan, you have an, an enviable title and I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome. Welcome to Parkinson's Chat. Yeah, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Really happy to, uh, to be here and chat with you this morning. Okay, Lachlan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, I'm, I live in Melbourne, born and bred in, in Melbourne, and that's where I reside at the moment. I live with my wife, Jo. She works as a speech therapist. Uh, and I have two boys, 16 and, and nearly 13. So we've just been through homeschooling, as many people have. Uh, I guess I'm lucky that they're a bit older, so that was manageable. Um, in terms of my career development. I, I did my undergraduate studies at the University of Melbourne. I did a Bachelor of Science um, and I became interested in the brain and the, the central nervous system um, in my undergraduate period. Uh, then I did a PhD uh, looking at actually aspects of Alzheimer's disease uh, and then following that I went to Sweden where I did a period of postdoctoral research for about five years living in Sweden before coming back to Melbourne uh, to start my own lab and, and that's what I'm doing now. Great, great. Well, that sounds very varied. Um, so when did you become interested in Parkinson's research specifically? Uh, well, probably during that period in, in Sweden. Um, I was really lucky, actually. Uh, at the end of my PhD, uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Even though I was always interested in neuroscience, I didn't know where I wanted to channel that. Uh, and I was just fortunate. I, I went to a laboratory in Sweden uh, where they're really world leaders in Parkinson's disease research. Uh, it was run by uh, Professor Anders Bjorklund, who really pioneered some of the Parkinson's research that's happening today and developed yeah, a real passion for that while I was there, and particularly in the area of brain repair for Parkinson's disease, which is a very active area internationally at the moment. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay, can you tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, again, that, that developed in Sweden. So the sorts of concepts that I, I trained in and studied in in Sweden are the ones that I'm still pursuing. Uh, and it's around brain repair in Parkinson's disease. Um, so as you know well and your audience would know, we need new therapies for Parkinson's disease. And we're interested in the idea that you can replace the cell types that you lose in Parkinson's disease, so the, the dopamine neurons. Uh, so that's called a cell replacement therapy. And the exciting thing about that is we know it works. So there's proof of principle for that working through clinical trials that were run sort of in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and that involved using fetal tissue. Um, and they showed that if you take fetal tissue, um, which contain the dopamine neurons in their very early stages of development, and you transplant that into patients with Parkinson's disease, uh, you can have really remarkable long-term therapeutic benefits and with benefits over and above some of the currently available drug therapies. So, so hopefully that sort of gives you an idea of, of the approach. Um, but of course, fetal tissue is not an acceptable or sustainable uh, option as a, as a cell source. Um, but there's been a lot of development and excitement about stem cells, as you would probably know, over the last 10 years. Uh, and they are potentially a superior and ethically um, preferable source of cells and an unlimited source potentially to use for Parkinson's. So to summarise, in, in my research, we're interested in establishing that as something that we can use in patients. Okay, well, that sounds very interesting and very complex, to be honest. Um, so, what's, what are the next steps with this research? Where are we going with this? Um, well, it's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of expectation on stem cells as being the answer for a range of neurological conditions. And it, it absolutely is the case that there's the potential. I mean, they're, they're very powerful stem cells. They can make the therapeutic cell types that we need. For example, dopamine neurons for Parkinson's. Um, and we've shown that it can work. So to use stem cells as a, as a tissue source, it can be therapeutically effective, but we need to do that in a way that we can do it predictably and safely for patients. So when we work in the laboratory with these cells, we start off with what's called a pluripotent stem cell. So that's one of the more powerful types that can make any cell in the body. And we can apply procedures that kind of talk those cells into becoming dopamine neurons. But when we do it, it's, um, it can be unpredictable. So we can get um, different amounts of dopamine neurons. And also we get a lot of byproducts, if you like. So cells that we don't want and that cells yeah. that could be dangerous to transplant in a patient. So to come back to your question in terms of what the next steps are, um, it's harnessing the power of stem cells, but in a way that can be safe. So we spend a lot of time exploring ways to eliminate those cells that we don't want and generating a product that could be safe and predictable and go through to clinical trial. And we think that we're not far away from that, which is exciting. And, and we just received some funding to try and achieve that. Yeah, so um, congratulations on the funding. I believe it's a significant amount from the federal government. Yes, it's, it's through a scheme um, called the Medical Research, um, it's the MRFF or the Future Medical Fund. Research yeah. Future Fund. So uh, it was about a million dollars. Um, so we're very excited by that and very grateful for the support. And it allows us to pursue that concept I was just talking about for another two years. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So it's great. It's not going to get us to clinical trial. Um, that's going to take a bigger investment. I mean, that's going to look like four or five million dollars. Uh, but at least we think at the end of this period, this two year period, we can justify that and really make a strong case for that investment and in getting us to clinical trial. Now that sounds fantastic. Okay, then. Well, that's great, Lachlan. Um, thank you very much for explaining all of that. 